I didn't like know who to tell about it at first. I was kind of just kept on the download dealing with it myself. So that it made it really hard. It's isolating and it's it's really hard to find the strength to get up every single day and to to find a reason to to be living, <laughs> to be honest. But how do you ask parents who are already tired to give more? We end up leaving what could could work because we weren't engaged properly in the first place. Um, I was told many, many times that I was gonna die an addict uh, by doctors and professionals that I, I was a lost cause. Diagnoses, uh, I have post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, attention deficit hyperactive disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, high anxiety spectrum disorder, and uh, a ton of other ones that I can't even continue to list off. I've never had to talk to a doctor about my mental state before, so I, kind of doing that for the first time, you don't know what to expect. I don't feel safe. I don't know who they are. I've never met them before, and they haven't made an effort to get to know who I am right now. If you don't have a relationship with somebody, and that can be a doctor, a counselor, a teacher, or anybody, you won't trust them. I think partnerships are really important, and that common respect for each other's expertise, it just needs to be together, and not, not for or against. It's both of us together trying to get the answers. Trust doesn't come easily, especially to a youth that's been struggling. It takes a lot of effort, and it takes little things like, if you say you're gonna call, Call me when you say you're gonna call me. Check up if you say you're gonna check up on me. And by just doing those little things, you do, you start to build little pieces of trust and that makes all the difference in, in somebody's life. I walked in expecting it to be so professional and like you sit yeah. down, just tell him what you're feeling and then he gives you some prescription, but it was, so much more than that, he like talked with me and like asked how I was doing and it's like trying to get down to the bottom of what was going on more than just talk and then go. I was lucky enough to have somebody that I met when I was 12 years old that was no BS. And he said, if you want help, give me a call, here's my number. Personally, I always like the parents that are pissed off. Take advantage. The one who's still yelling at you really has belief in their kid's potential. Like, take that and go with it. It's, a, it's an opportunity. It's nothing to be scared about. You just have to align yourself with them. The school had called me and they wanted to talk about my son. And it turns out that every time people would ask him questions or he would raise his hands, he would cry. And I was so sad that it was 14 when I finally realized he was struggling so much. So all of a sudden, I had other people who knew that he was having a hard time. All of us joining together to try and find some solutions, and all of us knowing that it was all about making my son's life better. And it took me five years to pick up that phone, but I did, and I remembered him. And uh, I still talk to him on a daily basis, you know? So I think for me, you know, building that attachment uh, is, is something that's so crucial in a youth's life. One caring adult makes a resilient kid. Be that caring adult. That kid needs it to survive. Hey, thanks a lot. You are free. Yeah. Thank you.